my first knowledge of NPCC was when the college was first developed a um, long time ago. And I really had no personal knowledge of it until I was hired to be the director of instruction at Quapaw Tech, which was just right across the ravine. Um, in fact, first day that that I was at work and I had on my little state issue navy blue suit, you know, with, with little navy blue heels. Um, Quapaw, being a technical institute, we had a small engines class and we had just gotten a brand new four wheeler that we were learning, you know, to work on. So I said, hey, let me, let me uh, try it out. So I got on the four-wheeler, pulled up my skirt, got on the four-wheeler, and I started around the back of the college. And at that time, it was just kind of a dirt trail. So I went from NPCC all the way around the uh, uh, gym and back up here, and I was just tearing through, and Tom Spencer walked out. And I went, Arr! and stopped. And I said, Dr. Spencer, because I, I had met him one or two times before, but I thought I needed to formally meet him. So I hiked my skirt up and got off of the four-wheeler and said, this is my first day, and I wanted to officially introduce myself because I'll be working as the director of instruction. And that was my first, uh, I guess, formal meeting with, uh, with Dr. Spencer, which kind of set you know, set the stage for our meetings from there on out. Uh, he was, he was such a wonderful mentor to me. I loved that man. Mm -hmm. And I know I worried him to death, especially uh, during the merger, uh, asking questions and, and uh, getting all kinds of information uh, but he was such a Southern gentleman uh, and had done such a good job here at the college. How did you first know about Quapaw? I got a call from someone who worked here, and my degree was in early childhood elementary education. So uh, there was an opening in the child care program here, and they thought of me, and I came out and interviewed with the panel and they did not hire me. And then six weeks later, I got another call because the lady they hired uh, to go with this two-person team, that other person had left. And so she had moved into a different position and they called me and I came out and interviewed and I didn't get the position. <laughs> And so I said, uh, okay, Lord, what are you doing with this? And then a few, a few weeks later, I got a phone call that said, you've interviewed enough, but we think you would be a good fit for teaching uh, technical communications. So that was how the people and the technical part would communicate, the reasons to communicate. And so I hadn't been working with adults, but I said, okay. And I was doing that position. Sally was at the state. So Sally was really my boss when she was at the state, the big boss. And she would come down occasionally, and that's how I first met her. But I did that job, and then I moved into uh, director of community and, and corporate training and did go get my master's in adult education. So um, I was there when Sally arrived <laughs> as director of instruction. And this was at Quapaw, which, of course, became National Park College with Garland County Community College. Uh, let me give you a little history on the merger in case, uh, uh, in case somebody would be interested in that. Of course, we had Garland County Community College. We had Quapaw Technical Institute, two thriving colleges 
um, right side by side. Um, when I became president of um, the Technical Institute, uh, we went to the legislature that year and uh, did not expect any major, you know, whatever. However, Jody Mahoney, Senator Mahoney from El Dorado, decided that the best thing to do was to merge the technical institutes and the colleges that were side by side. Now, that would be in Garland County, and that would also be in Forest City, where you had East Art Community College, and you had uh, the Technical Institute there right beside them. Um, man, that, that legislative session um, was a booger because everybody was taking sides. Uh, there, were, there were students from all of the institutions at that session and every time we'd get in education committee, and Senator Mahoney was actually chairing the committee at that time, it was a yelling match, and it went on and on. And I remember going over to Dr. Spencer, leaning down, and I said, Tom, this is not the way to do it. We can do it, but we need to be in control, not Jody Mahoney from El Dorado. Well, the technical institutes really got behind the defense on this, and we beat that bill. It didn't come out of committee. Um, but at that time, we came back, and I sat down with the board at Quapaw Technical Institute. I said, guys, you know, I, I really understand this. And I said, we've got two business departments side by side. We've got two human resources offices side by side. Um, we've got the same things. Why force our students to make a choice of going to one or the other institution? And you know, we can do this, but let's do it the right way and let's be in charge of it. And they agreed. All of the duplicate departments that we had, we started that conversation. And instead of eliminating benefits, we put them together. And we made sure that people had a choice. Uh, we had two very different boards and try, and, and we merged the boards. We didn't, nobody lost their position at first. I mean, we really worked to bring everybody in. Um, but meeting with the groups and explaining what we were going to do, answering the questions, and uh, telling them what a wonderful thing this was going to be for Garland County, the surrounding area, what it was going to do for students. And I think one reason why we were very successful in, in that is that we always kept the students in the forefront. That was the important thing. And the second thing was we always kept the employees in mind. And that's why I think when we became National Park Community College, we had the best of both worlds. And it was a wonderful institution. And of course, that's the foundation that this school is built on now. Were you guys in the Hot Springs area uh, at the beginning of the college? And is there anything y'all have heard that y'all can pass along for the, for the footage? Mr. Ish Stivers, you know, was instrumental in actually in, in both schools, in trying to develop both schools. And uh, Mr. Ish always talked about that he wore his best khaki pants when he... Uh, came to the meeting to decide where the, the institution should be. And he walked this ridge and it was full of briars. And when he, when he got through and got out, he said his new khaki pants were just torn up by the briars. Uh, so at, at some point in time, 
Well, actually, it was when Quapa named that building after Mr. Ish, we presented him with a new pair of khaki pants. My first time as a student was when I took a word perfect class out here. <laughs> and um, I positioned myself by Joe Johnson uh, from smoking and styling in this area. And he would say, push F7. I'd go, okay. And, um, and so that is how uh, I got through that class was because he was there showing me what to do and um, had, a, had a good experience. And, but that was my first on, uh, on campus experience. I did bring my children because there were summer enrichment programs. And I remember my older son came out and took uh, classes that he enjoyed immensely. And it was a, a great opportunity for a lot of the students in the community. So can you guys tell us a little bit about the changes you have witnessed uh, for, to the college over the years? I thought it was more important for the college to be a family atmosphere so that when one department got a great win, the whole college got a win. And so that's, that's kind of what we did. Jill helped me with that, um, tremendous help. But we tried to make it where everybody felt comfortable with everybody else. That was, that was tremendously important to me. And, and I think that's what set us apart from the other colleges at that time. Choosing a new name. It was not Garland County or Quapaw choosing a new name. Working with um, focus groups, working with all kinds of, of people to try to get the input, to come up with the right thing. And it was, um, we voted, we submitted, uh, there was a lot of community input, but Dr. Carter worked really hard uh, to, to make this seem like a family. And it was, it took a few, it took a few years, uh, but it did happen. It, it absolutely did happen. We stuck together through thick and thin, and uh, our boards did the same. We had great boards. Both boards were wonderful. And uh, they listened to us and gave us sound advice. And the good thing, they were all out in the community, so we were hearing from everybody. And I think that's what really made the merger. And, and I'm saying merger, we actually created a new college. It was not one taking over the other. It was a new college. I think another thing that set us apart during our time um, was that we hired an intervention specialist. Um, and that would be a therapist. And I thought, you know, that's what we need with our students and uh, our faculty and staff. So, man, I started, I asked all over Hot Springs, who's the best? Who's the best? I found out and I went to hire her. Met her at the office and said, we need you at our college. Susan Millard came to work for us. Man, she made her salary and above in one semester because she was able to visit with students. She kept more students in this college. She kept us from losing faculty and staff. Um, and after that, you know, other community colleges said, you know, I think we need to do what National Park did. Also, uh, a lot of our programs got more accreditation. Yes. Moving so. from um, a one-year certificate to a two-year associate's degree, and then on from uh, we, 
we formed uh, relationships with four-year colleges and offered mm -hmm. all sorts of plans uh, on our campus through them. And so the uh, building of dormitory and uh, starting a bigger effort towards athletics and competing has, uh, has added a lot, I think, for the students to, to feel a part of a college community. There's a lot of, of many good things that come from that. And, and we did not have that when we were here. One of the things, I guess, that we were talking about the other day, what would you like to see um, for the students and for the college in the upcoming years? I'm going to tell you my number one thing, and I will sing this song until the day I die. I want to see the community more behind this college. I want to see them pass a millage in support of this school. We are at eight-tenths of one mill right now. I want to get out there in the streets and rally for this, and I think that's what I want for the students and for the college, is I think we need to be supported at least by two mills in this community. That's what I think would be the absolute best thing we could do for our students. The last thing that I think you want to hear from us is some stories. The first year that I was president, I went to the parade, no NPCC float. So I came back and said, hey, we're going to have a float in next year's parade. Jill, you're in charge. And so Jill got her committee together. We had a fabulous float. And I'm telling you, There's no budget. Joy Cantrell was wonderful. I gave you $500. For a float. Anyway, it was good. And so here we go. So for the next several years, National Park Community College, in fact, the next 17 years, National Park Community College always had a float and a parade. We, we always placed, you know, in the top three. So I told everybody, I said, okay, we're going to either ride in the parade or we're going to walk behind it. So all of our instructors would get out, they'd bring their kids, we'd have the parade, we'd walk behind it with NPCC signs or whatever. We, we eventually got mm -hmm. up to banners. Yes, we did. All right, so Jill and I are riding in the back of this float. And I believe David Caldwell was driving the truck. Okay, so we're there. And we have this little baby generator. We just, we put things together. To we, borrowed, yeah. we borrowed, we oh. borrowed a generator that didn't, that was a, we borrowed a generator. Maintenance made a box to sit over the generator and they drilled various holes so it we could get air. Yes. And, and that's what ran our lights and ran stuff. Okay. So we're sitting in the back and we're waving and we've got our little Santa hats on and all that stuff. I'm sitting there saying, Jill, do you smell something? She said, well, I, I do kind of smell something. She said, oh my God, my legs on fire. My pants are on fire. And to keep the generator getting enough air, she had put the toe of her boot up under there to lift up the box. To get some air. But her britches were smoking. So we were down there beating out our britches. I said, you can't do this. We're going to have to do something. We were beating out our britches. And, and finally, she backed up and she said, well, I think I'm going to faint from the smell. I said, don't you dare. Don't you dare even think about it. And we're waving and we go on down there. I said, put your foot under that box, lift it up. And so we got through that time. Okay, it seemed that there were always things that happened. Tell them about the time the lights went out. Well, I can. Uh, 
What happened with, there were no feet under the generator until we lost lights. And so they said, you know, this is a portable generator and we don't, we need more air under there and it's not going to come on. We start down at Park Avenue, but the judge's table is at Hill Wheatley Park. And we just had a great time till right before we get there and there we go. So I did have on boots and I did put it under and hold it up. And when I would do that, then, then we had the lights and were able to make it through. There was another time <laughs> that we're going and David Caldwell and is pulling that trailer and I cannot. We had uh, Darla Thurber and Suzanne Hendricks popping oh. up <laughs> out of Jack in the Box. And it was amazing the things right. they did. It was just amazing. And our power went out again. We lost all that. And so it's a dark no float approaching the judges. And I get out and run around, or we may have been walking then, I don't know, but I ran around to David Caldwell, who was driving that truck, and I said, you've got to get out and fix this. You've got to get out and fix this. And he said, I don't know what's wrong. I didn't put it together. I don't know anything about how to do this. And I said, fix it now. And jerk the door open. He said, I'm, I'm driving. I said, anybody can drive this truck. And so by George, he got out and he twisted a few things and it came on and I said, see? And, and Jill's driving the truck. <laughs> well, we were holding up the parade, but uh, <laughs> he did it. To his surprise, mm -hmm. to everyone's surprise, but that was one of our better floats. I we mean, we had first place that time. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And Dave, it's all thanks to David Caldwell. Yeah. But there are funny stories. There was the group that that was part of, it's, I guess it's called Well Yes Now, but they had done this uh, big competition and boot camp kind of thing. And so, lose weight. And they were going and get healthier because there were mm -hmm. exercise classes you could take and, and they were weighing and they would get a prize. Whatever team lost the most would get a prize weekly. HR was all behind this, and so they decided they were going, they decorated boxes and, and cut them out in, in armholes and decorated them and were marching in the parade. And some of them had numbers on them and everything else. We had this person who had done a great job in, in participating, but we get about halfway down there and boxes are beginning to fall. <laughs> this woman, well, I was going, oh, okay, she's going down. And so <laughs> she, was, she was about to hit the sidewalk. And so uh, th that was not the message we wanted to send with that. They're carrying that banner. And mm -hmm. so we got her off to the side and I said, how are you? And she said, not well. So we popped that box off her and opened the door and she finished the parade. <laughs> probably next to David in the, <laughs> in the cap. But people were uh, kind of overextended with that thing. Always something funny. Always something funny. And we did win. And we were there. And we were involved in community projects. Always. Uh -huh. She gave me that title so she could tell me where to go and what to do. Went to Garland County... Um, courthouse and met with judges and people from the community and adult education was there and we were asked to start uh, programs for folks that were having problems in living in shelters or potter's clay or some of those things 
to teach life skills. And Dr. Carter made a commitment that day that we would be teaching life skills to these folks in the community. And um, they, were, they were thrilled and adult ed was already doing things, but they had satellite offices and they would make a, a concerted effort for, to make sure they got there to get their GED and that sort of thing. And so we did that for several years. And, and that was a blessing for Jill because she got to be the new life skills teacher at Potter's Clay uh -huh. and did a great job. Mm -hmm. So see, she was always being blessed, you know, with those things. Well, it, what was wonderful was because when you talk about life skills, we were able to bring in nutritionists and we were able to bring in um, skin care. And many of these folks had legal dilemmas that did not just uh, constitute them uh, breaking the law, but they had lost children. So we were able to bring in some family uh, attorneys that came in and answered their questions and did things like that. But in doing that and having other people from the community come in it bolstered their self-esteem. They felt like people cared about them to come in and do these things. And it also increased community awareness mm -hmm. about the needs in our city. It was an excellent program. Uh, and Dr. Carter was always looking for ways to connect with our community and give back and, and build relationships. And that was a great thing for National Park Community College. But a neat thing I think for us to end on is the camaraderie that we shared, the empathy, um, the love for our students, uh, and how we would help each other. I know when Melba Lancaster finally battling cancer, lost her hair. The next day, every staff member on this campus wore a toboggan. We all wore a toboggan because we were in total support for her. And, you know, I look back on my career in my life and the most wonderful time that I spent were here on this campus. I felt like it was uh, a calling from God. I felt like my service was a ministry. I received much more than anyone else did. But every time I drive on this campus, my heart swells. And National Park College will always be my college.